writing burn-in payloads for the Bash Bunny, and Bash is ridiculous, this time on Hack 5. Hello and welcome to Hack 5, my name is Darren Kitchen and on this dose of Technolust I'm talking about a burn-in test payload for the Bash Bunny that you can use to stress test machines and I thought that it kind of went along nicely with something that I was doing on the last video as it pertains to some development work here that I'm doing with the Bash Bunny working on some new uh, attack mode magic and it reminded me of a, uh, a payload that I quickly threw up on the, the Hack 5 Bash Bunny GitHub repository where all the payloads live uh, which was used in the development of our beloved Keycroc. Uh, you guys have heard me talk about the Keycroc in the past. It's not just a key logger, it's a pen test implant because, you know, it actually has like a, a Linux based system in here with like oodles of RAM and oodles of gigahertz. And you can put all your pen test tools on there like Metasploit and then trigger all sorts of payloads based on what the user is typing. So it's not just a key logger, it's like a crazy, crazy pen test implant. And in developing this, um, I needed a way to systematically stress test these things. And what I realized was that while, you know, early, early, early in the development of this, while we were sniffing the bus to get the keystrokes and, you know, the ASCII table and all the other fun stuff that scan codes, like we should honestly do a live stream of just how ridiculous keyboards and scan codes are because it goes back to the 70s and ridiculousness. But uh, in development of that, realize okay, I need to stress test this, and what do I do? Well, plug in a keyboard and type, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Over and over, and if there's anything that I know from IT and hacking in general, it's that if you're gonna do something more than once, you really need to automate it. You know, it's uh, don't annoy me or I will replace you with a tiny shell script. And that brings me to just such shell script, because it occurred to me, hey, what do I need is something that can automate a keyboard, plug in to the key croc, and just type in, you know, A through Z, zero through nine, like forever, specials, all the other jazz, and then, you know, have a thing actually check to make sure all those keystrokes are coming through accordingly and, and the logs and all that stuff to verify that everything is working the way that we want it to. What do we have that can automate keystrokes? So this was a match made in heaven, you'd think. And I set off to write a payload to do just that. And now I refer you to a bash script of doom. This is probably the worst bit of bash I've ever written in my life. But, uh, you know, we don't all have to be proud of our works as long as it gets the job done. I'm going to walk you through it. Essentially, we go into an attack mode hid uh, with a vendor ID and a product ID. And we say, hey, you know, <laughs> in this case, a bash bunny mimicking a keyboard to a key croc. And we say, hey, I'm a uh, keyboard. And then we wait because I do this too often. And then we set this little string here. This is my test script. This could be anything, but this is what we are going to be typing over and over and over. We set a variable for how many times it's gone through. And then we set a loop. We don't even do any indentation here. Did I mention this might be my worst bash script ever? But whatever, it gets the job done. So in this infinite while loop, what are we going to do? Well, we are going to wait for forever using quack delay or queue delay. This could honestly be a sleep statement, but it gets the job done. It's going to wait because I just wanted to every now and then inject this so another script would test it. So what are we going to do inside this uh, infinite while, while loop? Well, another while loop. And what it does is it will read a character. It's going to read one character and it's going to give it a value of CHR. So now we have a new variable called CHR. And then what do we do with that? Well, we are going to do a terrible if statement. I, I mean, honestly, the worst thing about bash is probably the fact that there's like eight ways to write an if statement. So this is like the really cheap hacky way that I don't recommend but gets the job done. So what it's saying here is checks to see if our variable CHR is blank. And you're probably like, why blank? Well, because what happens is when you get to here, this will actually show up as blank. And so when it reads that one, it's going to say, hey, if it's blank, and then this ampersand ampersand says, hey, if this if statement is true, then what it's going to do is it's going to quack space. And you're probably wondering, why are we quacking space? So you can quack string whatever you want. 
But if you crack the word space, it's not going to type S-P-A-C-E. It's actually going to hit the space bar, just like if you were to crack enter or crack backspace or delete or control or any of those, right? So, and, and why? Well, because I can't say crack space and then a space because it's not going to know what to do. It's going to be like, well, what do you want me to crack? <laughs> you know? Uh, and it gets the job done. We're seeing a theme here, aren't we? Then if it's not successful, well, then we know that it must not have been an emptiness. And so in that case, we're just going to quack the actual uh, variable CHR, which is whatever that next character was. Because read tack N1 just goes, it goes T, then H, then E, and then it hits this space and says, oh, okay, we'll do this bit here. And you're probably wondering, though, at this point, like, wait, but how does it know what to read from? And here's the craziest part. At the end of the loop, done, right, when it's all said and done, that's when we actually echo into it dollar sign string from back here. And then the first while loop is done and we lather around and do the whole thing over again. This is the honestly the worst. This is demonstrating the, like, brilliance and worst part of Bash. But, hey. You know, that's what happens when you get a shell scripting language that's been around for like longer than most of us on this channel. And if it's not been longer than most of us on this channel, raise your hey, hey, props to you. You know, high five to to Fortran and and Vax. So there we are. Now there's a problem with this script, and you see it has actually nothing to do with the script itself. The script actually works. It types the quick brown fox. Jumped over the lazy dog, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, over and over and over again. And so I plug it into the key crock and plug the key crock into the test machine. And the scripts are going, and I got scripts running on the key crock, testing the, the character log and verifying that everything is correct. And then it starts to die, and I'm wondering why. And if you hearken back to the previous video I did where we hacked together this bash bunny, you will notice that I mentioned the computer ham that you should not eat even though it looks like it would probably be delicious. That little gooey bit there is a heat sink. This is important because there is very there's a lot of similarities between the, you know, the under the hood of a key crock and a bash bunny. They share the same sock or system on a chip, right? And so they also share the same heat sink. Okay, well, that's fine. That's all well and good. This doesn't honestly get that hot when you plug it into a, a normal keyboard. Bash Bunny is not a normal keyboard. Bash Bunny is a computer. So it took a while to realize, like, why is it getting weird results? And things start really breaking down in weird ways when you start having, like, thermal overruns in computers. And, and, and honestly, what happens is, like, the USB port itself starts becoming a heat sink to the next one. And then now they're, like, both in heat death. And, and the key crock is overheating the Bash Bunny. The Bash Bunny is overheating the key crock. Everything's falling apart, right? This was months before you guys ever saw this. And then it dawned on me when I broke out do, 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 ye old voltage tester. I just, wait a second. Why is this happening? So you plug a normal keyboard into a voltage tester and into a computer, that voltage tester is going to read like practically zero. It doesn't really take a whole lot to run a keyboard, even the wireless variety. Well, uh, as it turns out, I was drawing way too much power from a device that's not meant to deliver that much power, both for itself and for any peripherals plugged in, and I created a thermal chaos. The radiation level is off the charts. With this little bash script, not because it's a terrible bash script, although objectively, this is a terrible bash script. In any event, guess how we solve the problem? If you're guessing a uh, USB rubber ducky, ding, 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 plug this into a voltage uh, meter and it's going to report practically zero because it's, it's a very, very simple chip. As it turns out, this thing isn't like, you know, 1.7 gigahertz quad core. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, that's what I got for you right now. That's kind of what's on my mind. As we delve deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole that is the Bash Bunny. See what I did there. Okay, with that, I'm Darren Kitchen. Trust your techno -less. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.